Hello everyone, welcome to Crime Files Exposed. In today's video, we will look into the chilling world of serial killers who employed a silent and sinister weapon, poison. Join us as we unravel the dark tales of individuals who use toxic substances to bring about the demise of their victims. Prepare to be captivated by the unsettling accounts of these poison welding murderers, their methods and the haunting mysteries that surround their crimes. Number 1. John Botkin Adams John Botkin Adams was a British doctor and general practitioner who became notorious for his alleged involvement in multiple suspicious deaths during the 1940s and 1950s. Born in Ireland on January 21, 1899, Adams practiced medicine in Eastburn, a town on the south coast of England. Adams primarily catered to elderly patients, many of whom were wealthy and had significant assets. It is believed that he took advantage of their vulnerable state and administered excessive doses of medications, possibly with the intention of hastening their deaths. His patients often left behind sizable inheritances, leading to suspicions of foul play. Adams' practices attracted attention when the unusual number of deaths under his care was noted. The local police and authorities initially overlooked the suspicious circumstances surrounding the deaths and Adams continued his medical practice without significant scrutiny. However, in 1956, after the death of a wealthy patient named Edith Elise Morrell, concerns were raised by a nurse who suspected foul play. The case was investigated, bringing to light Adams' connection to multiple questionable deaths. Adam was eventually arrested and charged with the murder of Morrell, the trial began in 1957 and received extensive media coverage capturing public interest. Over a 30-year span, Adams was suspected of being responsible for 163 patient deaths. Adams received inheritances from 132 of his patients' will, potentially making him England's richest general practitioner. After falling during a shooting expedition, he developed a chest infection and passed away in June 1983. Number 2. Graham Frederick Young Graham Frederick Young, also known as the Teacup Poisoner, was a British serial killer known for his fascination with toxic substances and poisoning. Born in England on September 7, 1947, Young developed an obsession with chemistry and poisons from an early age. As a teenager, Young began experimenting with toxic chemicals and substances, often using his family members as unwitting subjects. In 1962, at the age of 14, Young's activities caught the attention of the authorities when he poisoned his stepmother, resulting in her death. He was sent to a juvenile detention centre, but was released at the age of 17 without a full understanding of the extent of his crimes. After his release, Young secured a job in a photographic materials company where he had access to various toxic chemicals. He continued his poisonous experiments, this time targeting co-workers and acquaintances. Several individuals fell ill and two people died and 70 people were unwell as a result of his actions. In 1971, Young was finally apprehended when a suspicious co-worker reported his concerns to the police. An investigation revealed Young's involvement in a series of poisonings. He was arrested, charged with murder, and ultimately convicted for his crimes. Young was sentenced to life imprisonment for multiple accounts of murder. During his time in prison, he studied pharmacology and toxicology further deepening his knowledge of poisons. However, in 1990, after serving 15 years in prison, Graham Frederick Young died under mysterious circumstances at the age of 42. Some sources said that he was poisoned by his fellow inmates. Number 3. Javed Iqbal Mughal Javed Iqbal was a notorious criminal in Pakistan known for committing heinous crimes. Born in October 8, 1956, in Lahore, Pakistan, Javed Iqbal gained infamy for his involvement in a series of murders targeting young boys. Being a successful self-made person, he demanded respect from others. One day, he reported an assault by two young servant boys, but the police didn't think he was telling the truth. 
he had endured more abuse by beating and being accused of sodomy. After the way the police handled him, Iqbal felt mistreated and disrespected. When his pride got hurt, he resolved to seek revenge on the world he despised. In 1999, Iqbal sent shockwaves through the country when he confessed to the sexual abuse and murder of 100 young boys ranging in the age from 6 to 16 years old over a period of 6 months. Iqbal said, I could have killed 500. This was not a problem, but the pledge I had taken was 100 children and I did not want to violate this. My mother had cried for me. I wanted 100 mothers to cry for their children. He claimed to have lured the victims to his house where he would subject them to horrific acts of abuse before eventually poisoning them with cyanide or strangling them to death. Following his confession, the police launched an extensive investigation and the details of Iqbal's crimes horrified the nation. He provided chilling accounts of his action and even claimed to have dissolved some of the victims' bodies in acid to eliminate evidence. As the investigation unfolded, it was discovered that Iqbal had maintained a diary in which he meticulously documented his crimes, including names, dates and details of each victim. He kept photographic records of the body parts and recorded the cause of eliminating the bodies. This diary served as key piece of evidence in the case against him. In 2000, Javed Iqbal was arrested, charged and brought to the trial. The sheer brutality and magnitude of his crimes shocked the public and there were calls for severe punishment. However, before the conclusion of his trial, Iqbal was found dead in his prison cell alongside one of his accomplices on October 7th, 2001 by poisoning themselves. However, Iqbal will never know that his mission was a failure as 26 of his claimed murder victims were found alive after his demise. Thank you for joining us on this unsettling journey into the world of poison welding serial killers. These chilling stories serve as a reminder of the darkness that can lurk within human hearts. Let us reflect on the lives tragically taken and may their memory inspire us to seek justice and protect the vulnerable. Remember to subscribe to Crime Files Exposed for more intriguing and chilling crime stories. Until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes open. Goodbye!